Hi, welcome to the Gunner's Vault. A lot of people will tell you, don't try this at home. Me, I'm going to tell you, as long as you're legal and not stupid, yeah, try it at home. Howdy! Well, as you can see, since our last video, my cold has cleared up a little bit. I can actually talk. That's awesome. Because today, we're talking about the Beretta Model 38A. Now, let me kind of give a caveat here. This one is actually a 3844. You can tell that because of the recoil spring in it. The recoil spring in this one is a big, huge stand spring. In fact, this one has a stand spring in it. Why does it have a stand spring? because the original model 38 a 44 spring is impossible to find so when I built this I couldn't find it so I had to modify a stand spring slightly to make it work works great as you'll see in the uh, firing video a uh, little history on it this is basically it's an Italian gun Beretta Italian duh, duh. Um, it was made around or designed around you know 1935 ish and came into being in 1938 ish uh, I say ish because you know there's all kinds of well it's model 38 it must have been made and designed to produce in 38 that's not entirely true with all weapons uh, it can say one number and be something different uh, case in point the uh, I know there's one give me a second the model uh, MG15 from the uh, Germans or the model MG34 those actually weren't you know 1915 1934 weapons they were close to that era but they kind of weren't. You could get my drift. So anyway, made around the 1930s, late 1930s. Uh, it was really popular. Incidentally, this gun was started or started out being for paratroopers, which is cool. Paratroopers are cool. They sacrifice their knees and backs to jump out of perfectly good airplanes. Not my cup of tea, but they dig it. So hey, whatever. Uh, they'd have uh, special little vests that they'd carry magazines in. They carry like I think four or five magazines that were basically like that. It looked really neat. They called them samurai armor, or samurai carriers because they looked like little samurai armor. Uh, however, you know they put ballistic plates right here for a reason. That's where you get a lot of shots taken, protects your vitals, stuff like that. Now the thing is, you got all these rounds right here in front of your chest. If you take a hit, it, yeah, the round might not go off. But you've certainly got powder and you know shrapnel and all this other stuff that now is inside your wound. Not optimum to carry magazines like that. Um, <clears throat> but you know you've just been shot. That's a small thing. But anyway, back to the gun. It's actually a really pretty little gun. Uh, right hand charging handle. And what's really weird about this? Left hand ejection. And this is actually a right handed gun, but. It, seems to fit left-handed shooters better uh, as it's a 9 mil just regular old 9 mil but it's long as hell it's basically the same size as like a 1022 or something it's it's, it's rifle size uh, that's what makes it really controllable it's just heavy it's long got a long barrel on it uh, the barrels only actually from about here to here let's say that's about 12 inches or so give or take uh, you do have an effective uh, flash hider and brake on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't shot it at night, so disclaimer, it, I, I assume it's effective flash hider. I don't know. Um, the bayonet lug, because you know it wasn't long enough, you had to make it longer. And every gun in World War II needed a bayonet. I'm pretty sure the Type 14 Nambu had a bayonet lug on it at one time. Why not? They just, they really enjoyed their bayonets. They, they liked to whittle back then, and they had a lot of downtime between battles, and they'd whittle with their bayonets. I assume. <clears throat> uh, two triggers. First one, or the forward one, rather, is semi auto. Rear one is full auto. Open bolt weapon. So you just, pop, 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 
you know, switch between the two. It's really neat. Uh, in trained hands, you just kind of go full auto. The cyclic rate's not too horrible on this, so you can get away with just going full auto all the time. Uh, magazine comes straight out the bottom of it. It's pretty, you know, the profile of it is pretty obvious when you see this thing. You're like, what the hell could that be? Oh, that's a Beretta 38. 3844. Ah, I remember. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Well, magazines are probably really hard to find, so if you've got one and you don't have any magazines, good luck with that. Um, sling loops on this side, so you put a, put a sling on it. Again, every World War II gun had a sling. Slings are handy, though, because you don't want to just lug this around carrying it. Uh, it does have a little cleaning kit holder in the back, which is pretty much impossible to open with your fingernails. Uh, no cleaning kit. Now, yeah, disregard what I was about to say because it was, it was stupid. Um, you can see it's old school because it has the capture screws in it, which is basically big screws with little cutouts in it that hold it together. And those cutouts, there's little capture screws that screw in there and hold it together. Uh, like I said, the paratroopers started off using this and it kind of went to uh, other higher ranking guys, you know, like whatever field marshal is in Italian. Field marshal o Marshmallow. Eh, ah, might be, you never know. Uh, but it would go to those guys because they really liked it. It was pretty accurate at longer ranges than like uh, MP40, longer barrel, uh, true regular buttstock like an MP41 or something like that. Um, it kind of never found its way in widespread service through the smaller troops. You know, just your regular El Grunto. I guess that's how they say it in Italian. I don't know. I'm not Italian, but I do like pizza and pasta. I do. But, uh, you know, it, it never really made it to the man on the ground type of thing. Just because they didn't produce a lot of them. It's, it's relatively simple to produce. It is. It's not a lot. Well, there's not a lot of parts. Unless you're talking about the fire control group. The fire control group in this absolutely is a nightmare. There's a lot of parts in there. I am not taking that apart. I am not showing it to you because I have no faith I'll be able to get it back together again. It sucks. I don't like messing with it. It's a dual trigger setup. It's never an easy deal. And they they took never an easy deal to an extreme this time. And, uh, yeah, this, yeah. Um, taking it apart is relatively easy. There's a little spring active. Oh, look. I got dirty. I was actually spray painting some rust spots on my new fast attack vehicle that I'm going to rebuild. And I apparently got some rust oleum on me. I just did that, you know, to cover up some rust until I can sandblast it. I'm proud of it. It's cool. So I'll talk about it every once in a while. Now back to taking it apart. Just press on this and turn it. Well, I'm not going to do that. There's no reason to. We press on it, turn it like a pill bottle. That comes out, spring comes out, bolt comes out. Uh, there's no mystery to it. The bolt is round, has a big sear notch on the bottom. A severe sear lug actually, because it hangs down from the from the outside roundness of the bolt. Uh, regular sear setup in there, open bolt like I said, in both semi and full auto. Um, no, here's your safety. Safe. Fire. That's handy in case you don't want to shoot it. Need a safety. Uh, that's about it, man. Um, I can tell you this much: making these things is a nightmare. It's I didn't enjoy it, but shooting it is actually pretty fun. You know, there's some guns that you like shooting, some guns you like building. This one I like shooting. It's just weird because when you're shooting it. Disclaimer, there's nobody on the camera, so and the weapon is empty. So the, when I point it that way, you don't say, oh, man, he's pointing a gun at his cameraman. I'm not. I'm not. Chris is over there. So when you're shooting it like this, what you'll immediately notice is all the rounds doing like, or all the empties doing like this in a little cascade. It's a, it's not unnerving, but it catches your eye. And it, if you're not ready for it, it's kind of like, what the hell is going on here? Because you're just not used to left-handed ejection being a right-handed shooter. Look, another action shot. Oh, go. Uh. Okay, so that's it. That's the Beretta 38, 38-44, which this one is. Um, nothing really to add. 
Uh, Italian World War II weapons. We don't mess around with a lot of them because there's just not a lot of them around anymore. It's a shame. They made some cool stuff, you know. Beretta's been around for a long time. Um, wish we had more. I want to get into more of their light machine guns, but good luck finding those. And good luck finding the guy who let you shoot those. So Maybe I'll bring a Carcano. You can find ammo for those. So yeah, this is this is the longest, strangest nine millimeter I've ever fired. You're like, where's the ejection port? Remember, right-handed gun on the left side. Remember? See how I like this, or not? Yeah. So actually. Really, really nice. It's kind of weird watching the rounds go in front of your face like that, though, but... Yeah, this is cool.